It's Tuesday, September 14th, 2021. I have a few articles I want to share with you today. Please feel free to comment down below on anything you want to talk about. Uh, I, I cannot thank all of you enough for all those comments. You really, really opened up my eyes. You, you opened up my mind and you've opened up so many people's minds and eyes reading those comments down below. So please, uh, continue to comment, give this video a thumbs up, share this video, and make sure you subscribe. But I want to start out with a couple conversations I had today. I talked to my uh, friend Ryan today from Los Angeles, and he notified me that he just ordered three months of emergency food. I think he got it from Four Patriots Food Supply, where I got my last order. And order, you know, this isn't a plug for Four Patriots. You can order it from whoever you want to. I order from Wise, Mountain House, for Patriots, and I think I have a couple of other companies I've ordered from in the past. Uh, but what we're talking about here is making sure you have emergency food, making sure that you have a food reserve. You know, we talk a lot on a daily basis about having assets and cash and what's happening financially, etc. I don't think we stress enough of the importance of having food and water. At some point, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this economy and this stock market is going to completely implode. You are watching the economy right now implode in front of your very eyes. Anybody that doesn't see this is living under a rock. It is clear as day. This economy is dying and it's imploding right before your eyes and my eyes. And so we need to do what Ryan is doing and what many of you are doing, ordering uh, the emergency food, Get yourself at minimal at this point. Uh, I used to say, make sure you have 30 days. I'm going to say now, as bad as things are getting, you need minimal 30 days of food and water put away. And so um, uh, do whatever you can do. If you can only have two weeks of supplies or four weeks, that's look, that's great. Do what you can do. But I think if you have the means, if you have the ability, get yourself minimally, minimal, a three-month food and water supply. Uh, Ryan also uh, ordered a jet boil. I did a show on that uh, a week or two ago. Uh, if you haven't seen it, go back, check it out. But uh, you can heat up, uh, you know, like 12 ounces plus of water in two minutes, and you can heat up your, your emergency food. You can make a cup of coffee, and you can do it very, very quickly and efficiently with a jet boil. So he got himself a jet boil, he got extra uh, propane canisters. Get yourself some extra propane tanks at the house for your grill. Uh, all this stuff right now you need to be acquiring um, because the shelves continue to get more and more bare. My friend Steve today texted me from a Home Depot that he was at and he's trying to get $7, I think they were metal pipes. Uh, he owns his own company. He needed these $7 parts to finish these projects he, he's doing. He says, I can't finish my projects without these $7 pipes. I need these pipes and I can't get them anywhere. So we are continuing to see the supply chain disruption taking place. Uh, another friend of mine, Aaron, not Aaron early in Texas, but another friend of mine, uh, Aaron, he was in uh, Flint, uh, Michigan, and he passed by a Chevy plant and he said, JB, there were like thousands of pickup trucks sitting out at this plant and they can't move because they don't have chips. So the moral of the story is, Get what you need right now. Order the food. Get the bottled water. Get a, a, a water purifier. Get the extra vitamins. Get the extra batteries. I went out today to a Home Depot and I stocked up on more batteries. So I can use them for radios, flashlights, um, communications, etc. So get yourself some extra candles, some extra batteries, some extra vitamins, maybe some protein powder. Uh, get the extra emergency food, get the bottled water. And I can't stress enough, you can go to the grocery store today and go get some, some canned food and just put it away. That stuff adds up every week. So every week you go to the grocery store, go get an extra five or 10 or 15 cans of food and put it away. Pray to God you never have to use it, but I promise you, you will sleep better at night knowing that you and your family are gonna get through any emergency. The lights go out, natural disaster, man-made disaster. Uh, if you just don't want to leave the house because things are getting too violent out there because we are now in, in an imploding economy and people are wiping out the store shelves, you don't want to be out there. You don't want to be dealing with the fights and the violence. You want to be home with your family, protecting your family. And remember, if you don't have security, 
You cannot protect your food, you cannot protect your water, you cannot protect your assets, you cannot protect your family members. And if people get hungry, you know what happens. So somebody will just take it. Let's talk a little bit about some of the news we got today. Consumer prices post smaller than expected increase in August. This is great news, right? I mean, this is, this is fantastic news. Uh, inflation only went up 0.3% from July to August, but the real story is consumer prices were actually up 5.3% in August compared to last August. And that's with all the manipulation. We know that the number is much higher. If you go to John Williams, shadowstats.com, the inflation number is more like 13.5%. And ladies and gentlemen, this is climbing. Uh, there's no way I think in, uh, that prices have only gone up 5.3% from last August to this past August. You and I, all know it's gone up much more than that. But that's the official number. And uh, I don't think 0.3% from July uh, uh, to August is great news. They were expecting it to be 0.5%. So wow, this is really incredible news. Uh, no, it's not because the overall inflation is up 5.3%. The overall manipulated inflation is up 5.3% from last August. Article today, on the hedge, and I'm gonna paraphrase through this article. I thought it was a really, really good one. It's titled, Seven Possible Causes of the Next Financial Crisis. Comment down below, what do you think will bring in the crisis? What, what's gonna be the straw that breaks the camel's back here? Uh, number one, what nobody sees coming. We could take a blind side hit from a big financial sack. So I've said this uh, multiple times myself, it could be something out of left field that nobody expected, nobody saw coming, and bam, there we go. Uh, so that's a very, very big possibility. How about this one, hack of the financial system. Hackers could strike trading and payment systems. No one uh, uh, would be able to find their balances. Systems can't clear. Nobody can find the value of their risk positions. No one knows who is broke or who is solvent. That is a huge, huge possibility right there. Um, we, we now know how fragile the system is, the amount of hacking, cyber attacks that, that we've been seeing, it's relentless. It's only a matter of time. Multiple banks have been, been shut down. So that is a huge uh, possibility. Uh, how about this one? All the central bankers get it wrong. Central banks have become slaves of the bubbles they blow. Inflation runs away. They ultimately have to raise interest rates and asset prices fall. As asset prices fall, speculative leverage will be punished. The everything bubble implodes. Uh, very, very possible. But I know a lot of people laugh that they can never raise interest rates. That's impossible. Um, did you ever think the world economy would just shut down? Did you ever think we would ever be where we're at today? Would you ever think we would see thousands or hundreds of thousands of small businesses absolutely wiped out? Uh, did you ever think that uh, we would see a majority of Americans sitting at home, not working, waiting for a government check? I mean, think about, think about this, anything is possible and you are going to see historic and biblical events unfold in 2022. How about this one? A housing collapse again. The biggest investment most households have and which are the mortgage collateral for the biggest loan market in the world, your house, right now home prices in the U.S. are rising at an unsustainable rate more than 18 percent a year. Home prices and sales are interest rate sensitive. Instead of the Federal Reserve manipulated 3% mortgage rate, what if it was 4.5%? What if it was 6%? House prices would fall steeply. Well, they would actually crash. And our world record house bubble implodes. The Fed must keep pumping this bubble. Overpriced leverage real estate is a frequent culprit of financial crisis. We've seen it happen multiple times, ladies and gentlemen. It's happened in multiple countries. So uh, any one of these things could set it off.
Electricity system failure. This is another possibility. This is why it's always good to have some cash and some coins. Bank accounts and cryptos won't be working. In fact, they will be worthless at that point. It will be about how much of that emergency food do you have? How much water do you have put away? How much security do you have? Do you have some silver coins? Do you have some gold coins? And do you have some cash on reserve? Something to think about, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't make these videos and I don't have all the answers, but one thing I want is for you to think for yourself. I want you to open up your mind. I want you to independently think and problem solve. Doesn't mean we all have the answers or the right answers, but we're thinking. And when we're thinking, it gives us a better chance to survive. How about this? The next health crisis. Who knows what tomorrow brings? And when I read this one, um, Again, we don't know what tomorrow brings or next week, what kind of health crisis we could see. And this is why it's so important that we take care of our bodies, that we're working out, uh, taking some extra vitamins, we're eating a little bit better. How about just getting out in the sun? The sun is one of the best things you can do for yourself. Get out and absorb some of that vitamin D, take a walk or a bike ride in the sun. And most of all, just keep the body moving. Too many people are just sitting on the couch, sitting on the recliner with the iPad, not moving. This isn't moving. The body's not moving. And people um, are really doing themselves an injustice. Uh, we have an obesity epidemic in this country. We have a, a, a health crisis in this country where people just aren't exercising. They're not eating good. Um, they're just, they're, their minds are frozen because they're just sitting around doing nothing. Get off the X and get moving. So I cannot stress enough the importance of physical health. You, you know, we all, I did a video the other day about wealth. You know, what do we consider somebody being wealthy? I'm going to go back to it. Somebody wealthy is somebody who's taking care of their temple, their soul, somebody taking care of their body, and somebody taking care of their debt. That is wealth. I don't care how big your house is, what kind of car you drive, how much money you make every year. What matters is, are you getting the debts taken care of, paid down, paid off? Are you walking close to God? Is your temple in order? And is your body healthy? Look, nobody's perfect, but I aspire to do a better job uh, with my finances, with walking close to God, having my temple in order, and getting a better physical shape. Am I perfect? No. Is my body perfect? No. Is my temple perfect? No. But I'm trying every day to make it better and better and better. And the last one, a major war. And of course, that would be China and the U.S. But I think, I don't know, I don't think we'd ever... Maybe, I mean, I could be wrong here, but what are the chances of a hot war with China? I don't think so, because China's winning the war right now economically, and, this, and China's winning the war around the world economically. They, when is the last time China had to fire a shot anywhere, any country, in any part of the hemisphere? Uh, they are taking over the world with an economic war. So um, prepare, ladies and gentlemen, and China is going to go to a gold-backed reserve Currency. Atlanta Federal Reserve cuts GDP forecast by 41%. Since August, they cut their forecast from 6.3% to 3.7%. So here's what we need to take away when we read articles like this. When we, when we are watching um, bellwethers like this, and it's this, the United States economy is collapsing, period. Uh, and, and to these people out there that think that this is fantasy land or that I'm crazy, no, you're crazy. You're living in fantasy land. I'm watching an economy collapse right before my very eyes. Uh, take a few minutes out of your day and just read some of the articles that I'm reading to you right now, um, whether they be on CNBC or The Hedge or wherever, Bloomberg, it could be anywhere. Uh, the Economic Collapse, WolfStreet.com. Read a few minutes a day. What is happening is very, very real. And unfortunately, the masses, while they're watching football games, while they believe that the stock market and the dollar are going to continue uh, to be here forever and that 
the uh, stock market is going to go up forever. It's never going to correct. It's never going to collapse. The housing market is never going to correct, never going to collapse. Uh, the U.S. dollar will be the world reserve currency for the next thousand years. These people are 100% wrong. These people, uh, they need help. They really do. They need maybe some counseling, maybe some therapy. But anybody that thinks what I'm saying is wrong, then you do not understand. You cannot read English. You, you cannot connect dots. Um, you just don't have basic arithmetic, arithmetic skills because you have to understand when you look at the debts and deficits here, we're approaching $30 trillion of debt. When you look at a $2.7 trillion deficit, that's money going out, not coming in, Two, almost $3 trillion going out, more going out than coming in, and you don't think there's a problem? 45 million people on food stamps, 14 million people food insecure in America, thousands of pickup trucks sitting in Flint, Michigan that can't be moved. We have supply chain disruptions right out here in Long Beach at the ports. Uh, you're looking at shelves cleared out at the Home Depots, at grocery stores, and you're looking at inflation, manipulated inflation at 5.3% from last August to this August, and you don't think there's a problem? You need serious, serious help. 41% uh, of Americans say it's going to take a miracle to be ready for retirement, report finds. This is on CNBC. I was reading this today. No one has money saved up, even in the so-called good times of 2019. Uh, what was it? Uh, almost half a country, half of this country, 50% of America nearly, couldn't come up with $400 for an emergency. And yet I'm reading articles today telling, telling me that America needs another 5 million homes built. Who in the world uh, is going to build a home when you have 25% unemployment in America, supply chain disruptions, 41% uh, of Americans right here don't have money to even retire, and we need another 5 million homes? Uh, what am I missing here? Uh, and when I look at uh, people go, well, I'm making more money this year. But you're not because the inflation is gutting any increase in your wages. So um, again, you know, we, we, we look at uh, inflation on food and fuel and energy costs skyrocketing when maybe your wages went up two, two and a half percent, uh, but the cost of food went up eight percent, nine percent, ten percent energy costs. You're, you're making less money now than you did a couple years ago. That's the reality of it. But going back to 41 percent of Americans say that, that it's going to take a miracle, miracle, to be ready to, to retire. Um, I thought that we were witnessing prosperity. I thought this was a booming economy. Um, but in reality, uh, people are dipping into the retirement, uh, the retirement savings. People are getting eaten alive with this inflation. And people just don't have the ability to save money to retire. I, I mean, I cannot even imagine what this, this whole thing is going to look like 10 years from now. And all I can say, ladies and gentlemen, is I wish I could report better news. Um, you know, I wish I had a car channel so I could shoot videos of great cars and, and you know, cars and coffee and doing all that fun stuff. And that would be fun. That would be great. And, and I would love to do that one day. I just cannot stand by and not report the truth to all of you. I can't just sit here while this economy and this country melts down and uh, go film exotic cars and, and uh, cars and coffee and having fun. And, and, and I can't do that right now. I have to report what is on my heart. And it is about all of you preparing for this time in our history, uh, preparing for the implosion of this economy and I would not uh, be able to look myself in the mirror if I was not doing this. Um, I'm very, very passionate about waking up as many people as I can. And I want to thank everybody out there because of your comments. You've woken up so many people around the world and right here in America. Uh, I have a microphone. I have a camera. I can talk. I can think out loud. But because of all of you commenting down below the truth, the reality and what's happening across this country. You've made people think, you've made people get off the couch, you've made people get better mental shape, spiritual shape, physical shape, and financial shape. And I make these videos to reinforce on a daily basis that we stay on track, 
and we continue to do what we're doing because the inevitable is coming. A very ominous time in our history is coming and it's going to be very, very disruptive. It's going to be very ugly. It's going to be scary and you need to get ready now because there are going to be no do-overs. There's going to be no going back. What you have is what you have. So get in the mental mindset right now to what is coming. That doesn't mean to be uh, paranoid or, or scared or, 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 you know, or, or um, just negative about life. A tsunami is coming. Prepare for it. Simple as that. And we will get through it. Simple as that. Many of you will not just get through it. You will prosper. Massive wealth is going to be made during these uh, horrific times. So don't just let the 1% prosper. You should prosper too. Be your own central bank. Make sure you have cash, assets, food, water, a mental mindset, and most of all, God. I'm going to leave it there today. I look very, very forward to speaking with all of you very, very soon. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Share it, give it a thumbs up, and make sure you subscribe. God bless.